Hey everybody, Kelly Engineering here, and welcome to episode 1 of Dimension Zeros, a 1.12.2 mod pack made by Sir of Legends. Uh, what drew me to this pack is the fact that uh, if you look at the quest book, uh, it is story based. So uh, this is this all this text over here is actually uh, the book talking to me. And uh, it's also uh, a lot of magic mods, which I need to get better at. Uh, even though, man, it looks like Extreme Reactors is in here too. Immersive engineering, compact machines. Regardless, I'm uh, I'm gonna be doing this pack uh, just so I can get better at magic stuff because magic mods are by no means my strong suit. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, Grimoire of Gaia and Fire and Ice are in here, and uh, actually when I first spawned on this seed, and I'll type the seed right now. So that's the seed. I'll put it in the description as well. Uh, yeah, when I I spawned. Get out of here. I spawned right about here, and I uh, noticed that there's a recurrent complex structure, but if you look at this little rock formation, I'll zoom in. This rock formation is a uh, part of fire and ice, and uh, sirens will spawn on it. So once I got in range of this little campsite over here, the sirens caught me in their song, and uh, yeah, I took care of them before the uh, I went into creative mode and took care of them because, um, yeah, I haven't started the mod yet, and... It's, it's kind of ridiculous that where I spawned, there were already something there that could kill me very easily. They took like 6 HP uh, six HP of damage. So yeah, I took care of those just to set everything up and uh, scouted the area a little bit in another world. And there's actually uh, Lost Cities structures. Uh, yeah, Lost Cities structures about this way, about due north. And I'm very happy with this seed. So this is where we're going to uh, begin. The mod gives you the quest book, a waystone, a homestone, and uh, a lunchbox filled with a whole bunch of goodies. Uh, Spice of Life Carrot Edition is in here. So the more the different things I eat, the um, the more hearts I'll gain. So I, I can't remember if that's Spice of Life Carrot Edition or if that's nutrition. Regardless, the uh, Spice of Life is in here because the lunchbox is in here which is Spice of Life. So, uh, yeah, they give me a whole bunch of stuff, like these two Supremium Apples, uh, Oak Saplings, Torches, which I've already used, Bone Meal, and this Mysterious Matic. So this, uh, this Matic can't actually be used to harm anything, uh, because it is made partly out of, sp um, yeah, Sponge, which gives it Squeaky. So Squeaky is incapable of doing any damage, and... Regardless of that, it's still pretty good at uh, using it as a mattock or using it as a shovel. But beyond that, not much else. So as this is a story-based uh, story-based mod pack, uh, as uh, I read through this already, and uh, yeah, it's it's a lot. And apparently, most of the other quests are going to be like this as well. But we're going to start with this dimension zero, and I am going to read it in a uh, in a funny voice. Uh, just because I feel like it. And I'll give you a timestamp when I finally get done with it. Uh, in case you don't want to hear the mindless drivel of what this is actually said. But let's get started. Hey you! Can you hear me? Oh thank god! Finally I got picked up by someone who isn't a damn mindless zombie or a flipping slime. Fast, find a place to hide. I need to tell you something really important. And if you don't listen to me, you'll have a hard time surviving. I have no idea how you got here, but... Why are you looking so dumbfounded? You look like you have seen a bloody ghost. What? You've never heard a book talking? Well, of course you haven't. Books can talk. I am the great scientist and wizard Akashik. Well, at least that part of me that I managed to transfer into this wonderful information storage device I made. It may look like a book, but it is in truth a masterpiece of modern technomancy. Depending on the information needed, it will always transform into that medium of knowledge needed for any and every task imaginable. Great, isn't it? Yes, you may call me a genius. You don't look very impressed. Don't you see that this device would have made available the power of knowledge for even the dumbest of morons? What? You ask why I transferred myself into this device? Well, I am old, and even a great master's body doesn't last forever. So I prepared the Akashic Tome, how I call it, to be able to store not only the physical information, but also memory, soul, and personality. And when I was just about to implement the ability to control the outside from within the tome, multiple dimensional rifts opened, letting monsters stream forth into this peaceful world, causing natural disasters like never seen before. 
The moment the dimensional barrier collapsed, my body got ripped apart, and in my last moments I barely managed to push the button to transfer my mind, hoping for the best. And so now here I am, stranded, unable to move for over hundreds of years. The dimensions have stabilized a bit, but left our world in a zero state, with nearly all of humanity wiped out or turned into monsters. Closing a small dimensional rift isn't that hard. All you need to do is place some source of light next to it, or wait for the sun to do the job. The process behind this has to do with the way the dimensional boundaries and light are interacting with each other. But explaining this part to you would take another hundred years, which we don't have. So for now, all you need to know is that you should be careful around these rifts, as touching them will send you to the Midnight Dimension, which you can only exit by finding another rift. A closing rift will cause it to suck in nearby entities. This will affect even you, so keep your distance when closing them. Oh, and if you see a rifter walking out, run away from it. It will drag you into their world. But sometimes bigger rifts can open in places where we don't reach them. These rifts are highly unstable and will release monsters until the sun closes them. These rifts don't happen too often, but in my experience it takes around five nights for enough chaos energy to acclimate, accumulate for one to open. Sadly, these rifts aren't even our main problem. By my calculation, this disaster will occur in a few years if we don't destroy the source of it. To do so, we have had to gather some things, craft equipment, practice magic, and... What? You ask what this source is? Did you listen to me? It's chaos energy. Well, I guess I can't blame you for this. I myself figured it out just ten years ago. In a parallel dimension lives a creature called the Guardian of Chaos, and he is guarding the Chaos Crystal. This crystal must have become unstable, causing it to release chaos energy. If we destroy the crystal before its energy levels become too high, we can stop the disaster from happening, I hope. Since time is crucial, I already disabled your need for sleep. Beds will now only set your spawn point. But you don't need to thank me, it was an easy feat with my skills. On a side note, I have also stored many items inside the Akership Tome during my experiments. If you manage to complete the tasks necessary to save the world, I will be able to provide you with some of them. But I can only partly control what items will appear depending on the task you complete, so some of them may be a bit random. Now say, do you want to help me save what is left of this world? I will guide you with all my knowledge. That's in desperate need of an editor. <laughs> uh, lots of run-on sentences. But, uh, alright, so apparently we just have to wait for uh, rifts to open whenever it hits night time. So, uh, and... Or run away from... Oh, I can't remember if those bees are hostile to me. Regardless, I, I guess I have to wait for night time. To happen and that may explain why they gave me an entire stack of torches for this so now that it's night time the uh the quest actually said that uh he removed he removed my ability to sleep so uh yeah that's absolutely true i cannot sleep the night away so uh which kind of makes sense because the rifts only appear at night but still the uh yeah, that is a little unfortunate <laughs> no uh no skipping the night time oh nice aurora that's beautiful so um yeah my next quest that I have to do is I have to kill a zombie. But I have nothing that can actually kill a zombie. Uh, because I have this squeaky toy and... Uh, there was an iron sword over here, but it had a... Uh, yeah, iron sword. This item is not usable by players. It can only be used by crafting. So I have no way of even killing mobs. Um, I've already died and I have no idea what I died from. I was just incinerated. What fired at me? Well, I have ghostly shapes, so it's not like I can be killed again, but still. What? Something fired at me. Oh. Wow, he's... Speedy. So, uh, the Ember's Ancient Golem killed me. Got it. Tomb disappears. Wow, nighttime is dangerous. While we're waiting for the, uh, daylight to happen, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, read some more quests. So, for this episode only, I'll continue using the old Madden voice. But, uh, if it's unpopular or, uh, annoying, which I do fear it is, uh, then absolutely put it in the comments to stop using the old man voice. And absolutely, I will. Uh, but for this episode, yeah, we'll continue using it just for the introductory quests. So, uh, let's get going. 
First, you should gather some wood, as it is one of the most versatile crafting ingredients. Normally, I would recommend using an axe, but after the disaster, most common tools turned into monsters, and even crafted ones refused to work. Don't think you can use your hands to fill a tree. People nowadays aren't built as sturdy as they once were. You will only get some splinters. It will take some time to get enough, but you will have to collect... Oh my word. Okay, maybe I'm not going to read, because the grammar is just terrible. The punctuation is... Ugh. What do you mean you have an axe? That's a mattock, you idiot, not an axe. Well, even if it isn't an axe, a mattock will do the job just fine. It can even shovel dirt and hoe the ground if needed, as its purpose is to be a farming multi-tool. But don't think it can replace axes and shovels altogether. Normal axes are way faster when felling trees, and a shovel, unlike a mattock, can also dig sand and gravel at a good speed. And not just dirt. Also, increasing your abilities for digging or chopping wood won't apply to a mattock. But more important is why it didn't turn into a monster. I will analyze this mysterious mattock while you do some work. If I find a reason it still works, this will be a huge help, and maybe we can even we will be able to create working tools. So I need to collect wood and wood planks. So lucky for me, the uh, when Recurrent Complex spawned this structure in, uh, it gave me a bunch of felled trees. So. It is no issue whatsoever to have a full stack. Boom. Woodpecker is done. Oh, whoa, whoa. What? What just happened? I don't understand why I just... Why a creeper explosion managed to get me. Alright, I have a lot to learn about this mod pack. Holy wow. Oh, okay, Minotaur, not good. Alright, regardless, Woodpecker is complete, so we can claim Oak, Spruce, Birch, Mahogany, Pink Cherry, or Bamboo. I'm gonna go Spruce. Spruce is my favorite. And, oh, whoa, what else did it give me? Give me Bone Meal Bags. Hmm, cool. So these Spruce Cones are actually from uh, Dynamic Trees. So I'm not, I don't have to be reliant on saplings, and uh, the saplings it gave me when I spawned in, I can actually convert into, nope, okay, the recipe is disabled. But there is a recipe to turn it into, here we go, so I need a dirt bucket, eh, no issue. So we can do that later. Regardless, let's uh, move on to the next quest. Every living creature has the potential to be born with a catalyst inside of them. These catalysts are normally invisible, and people would call them talents. But with the Akashic Tome in your possession, you will be able to see these catalysts and distinguish beings that have them from those who don't, as they will emit a strong aura. Now here's the trick. If you collect one such catalyst, I can help you implement its ability into your body, or remove and store them in an ability bottle. This should help you become a bit more capable than the talentless chum you are now. So it wants me to kill a zombie, and it will give me an ability bottle with not. Hmm. Well, not all... Yeah, that's weird. Not all enemies are going to have that, uh, inherent ability. So, <laughs> that golem I saw earlier who was moving speedy, he probably has an ability in him, but I didn't see any outward indication that, uh, there he is. I didn't see any outward indication that he was... That he had an ability. So, we'll uh, we'll jump that hurdle when we get to it. Oh, the Dryad's fine. Spiders? Oh, spiders! <laughs> I'm on the second night right now, and uh, I am sick of... <laughs> I'm sick of hiding in here, because the, the mobs are relentless. So I'm going to build this workbench. You want some good tools? So it's just a standard crafting station. So crafting station, boom, boom. Oh, make sure the quest actually, there we go. And set it down. What does it want after that? I'm gonna take the crafting table on a stick. Cool. And nothing else, nothing else unlocked, great. So, looking at this, it wants efficient sieving. It, 
Okay, if we're, we're lucky to have a tool to gather wood, but that won't be able to get stones. So we need to do this the slow way. I'll teach you a technique to gather stones that had a popular back in the days and became part of people's everyday lives. Even if some people found it to be just a tedious way to torture simpletons, it's called sieving. So, I have to make four sieves and I get five more sieves, so that will help me with my 3x3 three three pattern at once. And, hmm, actually that's not bad. Uh, I already have quite a bit of dirt because during the day... I, uh, oh, the sun's coming up, thank goodness. Because during the day, I... Oh, lag spike. Get out of here, dog. The spiders! <sighs> it's kind of hard to see here, but I do have a uh, enchanted book and a skeleton right there. Oh, a Simon the Wandering Nightmare. So he is a strong skeleton, a much stronger skeleton. In any case, I cleared out a uh, little moat here, so I don't have to worry about the mobs being able to hop over my fence as easy. So I have that going for me. And uh, But let's make, let's start making these sieves so we can complete the quest. Here we go, four sieves, and the quest should complete. Here we go. Alright, now that the quest is complete, I'm going to, because I need to, uh, I need to defend this place against spiders. But, oh! No, I want it... How do I get it in quest book mode? There we go. Alright, so I complete my sieves. I get a quarter heart, 64 dirt, chance cubes, and loot. Claim that. And what is in the loot chest? Slime ball, snowball, egg. Okay. I'm going to have to make some more chests here soon as well. well I'm going to take my dirt out. I'm going to put in this heart. And I should have some more dirt, I thought. I do. Here we go. Um, oh, I just realized I need some string. You know, I've been cursing the spiders, but luckily with them, uh, crawling in here so much, I've been killing them in the- I've been leading them through the fire and killing them that way since I can't do any damage to them right now. So, but I have enough string to make one mesh. Awesome. Quest complete. Oh, okay, I need to get some spores as well, so whatever, we'll put this down, put the mesh inside, and start sieving through some dirt. Alright, there we go, I got all of the things I need, ancient spores, sugarcane seeds, and grass seeds. Awesome, so I can complete that, get one more string mesh, so I can do this a little bit faster. Oh, okay, it was just lagging on me. And now that I have those, I can, yeah, sieve a little bit faster. It also gave me gravel, dust, and sand. Which undoubtedly will help me get better things in the future. But I'm going to open up this loot chest, put this hot chocolate in my lunchbox. And what's in the loot chest? Extract <laughs> and an obsidian chest. It's actually not bad. I'm, uh, I like this obsidian chest. I'll put it down. Even though I can't pick it up yet. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. The next that the next thing that we're doing is we're trying to get some more string. So if you look in the survival over here in these silky worms, I've uh, already made a crook, and uh, I actually got rid of. Got to be careful. There's a skeleton right there. Uh, I already uh, I got rid of one of the pieces of stone, and it took a while. Obviously, I don't have the right tool for it. But I put put a piece of dirt here, and I'm just growing. I'm just growing a uh, bunch of trees over here and trying to get more... Son of a gun. He's been there for the entire day. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get more string. So I also made myself a compressed crook, which is just four crooks. I'm glad that this recipe is actually in here. Uh, some people decide to disable it. But this should be enough... St oh, I forgot. I, uh, I don't know if vein miner's in here, but right now my grave key is... My grave key opens up the quest book, so I'm not really worried about that right now. So I'm trying to lead this uh, little bitty spider through the fire because uh, he has an ability, it looks like. So, come on, why won't he go into the fire? Alright, you know what? There we go. Alright, so I just got an ability totem for me. It's Dispel. Ugh. Couldn't have gotten something better. But, uh, yeah, these, uh, this spider issue is, uh, starting to become a real big issue. So I need to figure that out before I do anything else. 
Here we go, I am liking the look of this. So I uh, increased the fence height by one, and I also uh, used a bunch of slabs to make something that the spiders cannot crawl up on. Uh, so, unless there's like a spider, not a spider, but a skeleton sitting right here, I'm, uh, I'm sitting pretty in this little hovel while I get myself situated. Uh, it is going to be the fifth night soon, and uh, the tome whispered to me that uh, a big rift is going to appear, so... I need to I need to get cracking on some tools. Finally, stone. Dirt contains a decent amount of stone fragments mixed in, but sieving it you'll be able to get a high quantity of stone. But you can not you can also try a slower method and simply collect tiny pebbles from it by hand. But sadly it's pretty useless as it is now. You need to process it to get some more use out of it. So stone pebbles, cobblestone, furnace, and stone. Easy enough, I have more than enough stone pebbles. And I'm going to turn those stone pebbles into cobblestone. Get a furnace, and then using a furnace, which I already have two furnaces over here, luckily enough, but it wanted me to craft them. Oh, I did not use all my wood, did I? I may have used all of my wood. Son of a gun. Uh, can sticks go in a furnace? No, they cannot. Oh, okay, they can. Excellent. So it just became nighttime, and, uh... The tome just told me that a giant rift opened. Holy whoa! Oh, son of a gun. <laughs> Alright. That was fun. In any case, uh, it said that there are um, miners. Miner zombies around. So that's miner as in, like, mining for stone miners. Uh, so, I don't see a rift anywhere. And wow, that was some weird lag. I found out what minor zombies mean. Um, what the heck? They are zombies that can mine through stuff. So, yeah, there they are, right there. That's great, and I can't kill them. Alright, I've opted to just climb this tree, and uh, I'm going to wait for the morning to come. So, uh, something I have noticed is whenever, apparently whenever this rift happens, if you don't have direct light, you can't see anything. And I guess that kind of makes sense, because in the very first quest he said that, uh, he said something as much. But still, I'm, uh, shocked by how pitch, bl uh, how, how, uh, how pitch dark it is. Uh, sorry, I'm a little, uh, shaken up right now. I was not expecting those minor zombies to be able to, uh, get me so bad. But, so I'm up in this tree now, and uh, that's one of the great things about dynamic trees. You can actually climb the leaves. So, yeah, climbing up the tree was no issue. So I'm just going to wait for the morning to come. So the next thing I've opted to do is build high. So I've started uh, dismantling the uh, outer edge of this little fortification. And, uh, yeah, I built up, and I have it defended a little bit by the fence posts that were down there. Um, and I also started planting a little bit of seeds before realizing I need to iron to make a bucket to get some water. So luckily it was raining and I managed to get some seeds planted down and I'm fine with that, thank goodness. Um, and now, hopefully that'll help me out a little bit in the future with my food problem, because right now I definitely have a food problem. None of the food that I eat right now, except for these jelly sandwiches, are uh, can really help me with the nutrition mod or whatever mod it is that's making it so I can't eat everything. Um, well, with that being said, I'm actually ready to close out this episode. So uh, I know I really wasn't that productive this episode, but uh, this is a brand new mod pack I'm still trying to figure out. So uh, I don't, I like to go into mod packs blind, and uh, I most certainly did that in this one. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Kelly Engineering, and I hope that you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.